welcome to our summary on momentum. So first thing we actually need to understand then is what we're talking about when we refer to this term momentum. Now quite simply what the momentum is, is a measure that's related to the mass and velocity of the object. So we've got our calculation there in our second box that again we'll find on page two of our exam booklet that momentum which is measured in kilograms meters per second is the mass in kilograms times by the velocity in meters per second. So remember you don't have to memorize that we just need to be able to use it. First thing to note then is because we are obviously timesing the mass by the velocity if either the mass or velocity is zero so if the object has no velocity so it's not moving or it's got no mass then it would have no momentum. Now we need to remember the fact that our momentum has direction as well as size talking about velocity and that that momentum will act in the same direction as the movement of the object. To give you an example of the kind of question you might see for this then a person is cycling at 12 meters per second the mass of the person and the bicycle is 95 kilograms what is the momentum of the person and bicycle? So first thing we do is turn back to page two in our exam booklet and look up our momentum formula and write that down. So momentum is mass times velocity. Then looking through our question, we can see that the velocity is 12 meters per second and the mass is 95 kilograms. So substitute our numbers in and we get 95 times 12, put that into your calculator and we get our answer of 1140. To help us with rearranging this equation, obviously we can put that into one of our triangles. So all we've got is because it's mass times velocity, mass and velocity go on the bottom and momentum on the top. That'll then help you to make sure that no matter what they ask you to work out, you can rearrange it very easily. The second calculation that we need to understand to do with momentum is to do with the force that we're going to generate as the momentum changes. So again, on page two of our exam booklet, we'll see this calculation here, that force is the change in momentum divided by the time. So again, we don't have to memorize it because it is given to us in the exam paper. To give you an example of the kind of question you might be asked using that then, a skydiver has a momentum of 375 kilogram meters per second and stops in 0.75 seconds. What is the force on the skydiver? So in order to work it out, first of all, we need the change in momentum. So our skydiver, as we can see in our question, was traveling at 375 kilogram meters per second, and we're going to then stop. So that means it's going to zero. So our difference then is 375 minus zero, which leaves us with 375. And then we divide that by the time, which as we can see from the question was 0.75 seconds. So 375 divided by 0.75 in your calculator gives you your force of 500 newtons. Last thing to understand then is what does it actually mean? Now, if we've got a change in momentum that happens in a very short space of time, what we're going to see is a very large force being generated on that object. And the way that that ties in in P3 for us is all to do with car crashes. So when we're looking at a change in momentum, i.e. when a car crashes, that's going to happen very quickly. And obviously that can lead to large forces acting on the people in that car. And we're going to look more at that in our next lesson. We also need to bear in mind that the deceleration of our object will be very high. So the key thing here is to remember that if we've got a very rapid change in momentum, we've got a very large force and large forces can be very damaging.